Hello, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel. So um, today I'm going to talk about um, yeah, the bits of crap and stuff that you see in your glass. Um, you see it more in the old, older glasses uh, and occasionally you see it in newer glass. And um, yeah, it's different things. So it depends on what it looks like and also partially on the period it's from as well. So yeah, so I'll start with one, something called frit, some people call it seeds, and um, it's little white particles and little chunks of and what it is, um, and you see this in older glass, and, um, and it's bits of sand that hasn't melted in the mix. So you've got, you know, when they heat it up and everything, some of it's not quite melted. That's because in the early days the chemistry wasn't quite right, and then uh, or the heating techniques, they could get it up to the right temperature but not massively above. Um, probably wasn't until, I think it was the 1880s, the Germans created this process where they would heat it massively above the temperature that was needed to um, use it for blowing and it would make it very liquid, all the bubbles would come out, every bit of sand would melt and then they would cool it back down to the temperature that was needed to, um, I can't remember what the temperature is, but anyway, whatever temperature it is that they, that way it's useful for then um, making glass. And um, yeah, so so early glass, you, you'll see those kind of bits and pieces. The other thing that you're going to see in it is in the, you'll see this in early glass as well. Little black bits of rubbish, and um, yeah, so that's that's often um, soot or bits of coal or coke. So back in those days, before they had gas-fired furnaces, they, the furnaces would be heated with coal or coke and um, Bits of it. and it's a messy process. It's like a horrible, smelly factory floor um, with massive heat and everybody's running around and wedging bits of glass around. And yeah, some of the coal might get into the glass and be sealed within it. And um, and yeah, sometimes you see streaks in it as well. That's soot from from the chimney. Um, and and the other thing that you'll see is um and you'll see this in newer glass as well and that's little bits of clay so when they were making um, the glass they make a huge clay pot and um, they the glass is made in that and the clay deteriorates so they i think the pots last about a month or so and um, the clay deteriorates and bits break off and get into the glass and eventually um, they and also the the surface of the clay starts to interact with the glass at some point they have to go yeah this needs chucking they, they break down the front of the furnace and take the clay pot out and put a new one in and um, yeah and they do this while the whole thing's lit as well um, there is actually a really great video on this um, it, I think it's for Thomas Webb from the 50s and they show the whole process of um, making the pots and breaking down the furnaces and putting a new one in yeah it's it's amazing i will put a link to it because if you're interested in yeah what a shitty business this, this is or hot and sweaty business this is i should say um yeah it's a really good video because it shows you the skills of the pot makers because it takes i think they, they have to i think he said it took them about a week to make a pot and it's huge and uh, and then they have to wait for it to uh, about a month or so or something for it to dry out so that they can fire it um, and then it goes into the kiln um, for making uh, glass. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's a very. I will put a link to that in in the description because it's really good. Um, and I have a reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my reference, which shows you what what some of the old furnaces look like, and um, and I will show you some some bits of glass with some of these bits and pieces that I'm telling you about so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we go. So um, the booklet, this is a booklet, Shire booklet, um, Glass and Glass Making by um, Roger Dodsworth. And um, this is showing you what um, glass making was like at the uh, end of the 18th century. You can see this is the furnace in the middle, all these guys all, and little boys as well running around with hot bits of glass and doing stuff and um, yeah and also over here this is one from the beginning of the um, a little comedy skit of um, this is from supposed to be 
the glass work from 1812. You can see it looks a bit more sophisticated than the other one. But um, yeah, still a hot business. Still multiple people um, pulling out hot glass from different parts of the furnace. So I'll go over the page. So just over the page, they are um, showing you. So these pots are three feet high. They're, they are absolutely, it doesn't sound that big, but they are really bulky. Um, and uh, yeah, and the tops is stopped because this, the way they're, they're, this is done, so they're put into the, built into the face of the furnace. Basically, the, all the heating is going on behind them. So there's someone around the back shoving coal in or whatever and um, heating heating the furnace up so all of this is sitting within the furnace um, and then just this front piece is sticking out and there's usually a cover on it that, um, that's also I think another piece of clay or something um, so they just lift when they want to get the, the glass out they take this front off stick their pipe in get a gather of glass and then slam the door back because it's blistering hot heat coming out of that and then they've got several of these running in a circle um, around the, the furnace uh, and here this they're showing you I think this looks like someone's breaking up a a pot this is it says it's from a French furnace with the open top early glass used to get lots of crap into it and um, because they had open top so just like this one is this is to stop bits of soot and stuff falling into the top whereas um this is open, so although the glass is in here, in this pot that looks like someone's breaking up, and it looks a bit like what was going on in the Thomas Webb video that you should really go and have a look at. Um, yeah, it's early glass used to get very contaminated. So, um, yep. So um, what I'll do now is I'm going to move on and show you a few bits of glass. So I've got here a couple of um, Irish glasses, and um, on this one it's very clear. You can see it's got these black bits and it's kind of they've ended up in a kind of a crease in the edge of the foot and it's created a little bit of a split because they're in a row and, and then on this one it's a rummer and where are they you can see if it, if it will focus just there and there there's two particles of sort as well so yeah um so there's that bit that's quite quite bad that one um so I might even consider that damage that glass but that's perfectly good to me um and in, in this one there's those two little specks um i think what's that there oh yeah, I didn't, didn't notice that. And if I pull it forward, if I get it to focus, focus, go on, focus. I think the glass is confusing it. But you can see just here, there's a little white speck. And that's probably because this is a probably circa 1810 or something. That's probably a bit of sand. So, um, yeah, there you go. So I've got here the bottom of a jelly glass, and you can see here there's a clearly a piece of sand embedded. That, as you can see, it's, you can't see it from this side. It's not on the surface, it's inside the glass. A little bit of sand. So, um, so yeah, there's that. So I have here uh, amethyst um, white friars spiral vase and if I can get the thing to focus you can clearly see this uh, and um, if I do this on the inside listen it's sticking out quite far on the inside and um, yeah and that's that would be a bit of clay because I think by the time this was made, I think the furnaces were gas powered. Maybe I might be wrong. It might not be, but um, yeah, I, 
anyway, the the processes would have been good good enough by then to melt all of the glass. But that's probably a little bit of clay off the off the pot. So I've got one more thing to show you. So what I'm showing you here is a little um, cruet mustard pot from probably from the 1830s, maybe 40s, um, Gothic style. Um, this is the crappiest, cheapest piece of glass that you're ever going to see. Um, yeah, look how badly that's finished. Yeah, they've not even bothered to put it back into the furnace and reheat that bit. Um, but yeah, and look at this. Look at terrible quality control here. This is soot that's inside the glass. Um, you can see all the bubbles as well that's in there as well. But um, yeah, it's really poor. But I mean, I have actually have the whole set of this. Um, but this is the worst bit, and um, yeah, I think that's probably the poorest bit of quality glass um, I've got in my collection, um, with that huge streak in it, and yeah, obviously no quality control, it just had to function. Um, so yeah, really unusual to see that much, and to me, this is a good thing. I said I've got the whole set. I've even got the stand for it, um, which is just a piece of lacquered wood with some really bad Ormolu mounts on it. And um, this is the real bottom end of the scale from that period. And um, yeah, it's it's the kind of thing that was churned out by thousands, and probably hardly any of it is left because it's bad quality. It's just chucked, chuck, chuck, chuck. So anyway, that's that. That's what bits of soot look like. So that's the glass I'm going to show you because I don't want to bore you by showing you more glass with little bits in. Um, yeah, um, one of the funny things that I found when I was um, trying to, how can I say, research or find my bits of glass that I'm going to use to demonstrate this. Um, so I went through, I've got quite a few, in the house I've got quite a few bits of um, Thomas Webb and um, Whitefriars glass and um, yeah quite a few of the Whitefriars vases had um, bits in them and the one I showed you was the biggest bit the most prominently sticking out bit in it and um, and some of the Thomas Webb also had little tiny bits in it as well but I also have a pile of um, Stromberg's Heisen vases um, and probably by mass more more glass because some of those are so big and heavy. I mean, one of them is probably the biggest one I have is equal to the mass of two of my next two biggest vases. It's absolutely a monster. And um, and none of those had it. I couldn't find any bits in any of those. So I don't know what the Swedes were doing that was different to what was happening in the UK. But I found that quite interesting because, you know, uh, I think that that amethyst vase I just showed you was from the 1930s. And all of the Stromberg Heisen glass I have is from the 1930s as well. And it was absolutely clean as a whistle, no bits in it. And either they just wouldn't let anything through that had any bits in it, and it was just totally unacceptable, or they had a different process. I don't know. So um, anyway, um, and yes, and the film that I'm going to put the link to, you've got to watch it. It's so cool. It's from the 1950s, and it's to be showing the glass making process in Thomas Webb but a lot of it's concentrating on making these pots and then also then switching them out of the furnace which is just like you know why those people didn't get big chunks of glass through them and all sorts of hot pieces I don't know you watch it and it's it's horrific you just don't want to be in there um, and uh, yeah so that's it for now um, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please remember to like and subscribe thank you bye